Ahoy everyone! So the channel is basically a year old today which is absolutely fantastic and one of the very first deck decks I put out was a Tiny Leaders deck for Depala. It was Dwarves and Vehicles. So one year on I'm going to revamp it with all of the upgrades that I've made to it since. Welcome and thanks for tuning in. Before we get started, if you want to see more fun casual magic every Thursday and Sunday, please take a second to hit that subscribe and bell icon to stay notified when new videos come out. It's free and every tap means a lot. With that said, let's get going. So this is a Tiny Leaders deck tech and this was one of the first deck techs that I actually put out on the channel and since we're pretty much around the anniversary of that I thought it was time that this got an upgrade especially since we're on a bit of a boss tip at the moment. So this is the parlor for Tiny Leaders. Tiny Leaders basically like Commander except you've got 50 cards in your deck, uh, nothing higher than a CMC of 3 and there's a slightly modified band list to go with it. Other than that, effectively the same. So Depala, getting things rolling. One red and white for a 3-3 three, three legendary dwarf. Other dwarves we control get plus one plus one and each vehicle that we control gets plus one plus one whenever it's a creature. What's really awesome though is whenever Depala becomes tapped we can pay X. When we do, we reveal the top X cards of our library, we put all of the dwarves and vehicle cards into our hand, then put the rest on the bottom of the library in a random order. So this basically just drags out all of the dwarves and vehicles that we want to be playing anyway. And yeah, it doesn't have to be tapped to be attacking, it can be tapped to be crewing. So needless to say, we're going to be playing lots of dwarves and vehicles. So what's up first? It's the dwarves. And we're starting with three dwarves that absolutely love their vehicles. So Renegade Will Smith, one and Boros for a 3-2. Whenever it becomes tapped, target creature can't block this turn. So basically when it crews a vehicle, we can lock down the combat there. Veteran Motorist is red and white for a 3-1. When it enters the battlefield, we scry two. Whenever Veteran Motorist crews a vehicle, it gets plus one, plus one until the end of turn. And then we've got Gear Shift Ace, which is one and a white for a 2 1. It's got first strike. When it crews a vehicle, that vehicle also gets first strike until end of turn. Now we're on to a couple of utility dwarves. So Dwarven Recruiter is three mana for a 2 2. When it comes into play, search your library for any number of dwarf cards and reveal those cards. Shuffle your library, then put them on top of it. So that's basically stacking our deck ready for the parlor to just draw us all of those cards. Then we've got SRAM, Senior Edificer, so 2 mana for a 2-2, and whenever you cast an Aura, Equipment, or Vehicle Spell, we get to draw a card, which, as everyone knows, is something that Boros doesn't do very well, so that's really nice to see in here. Now we're on to some other Dwarves. Surprise, surprise. Toolcraft Exemplar, so 1 mana for a 1-1, one, one, and at the beginning of combat, if we control an artifact, it gets plus 2, plus 1. If we control 3 artifacts, it also gets first strike, so that's really, really great at crewing vehicles. We then got Aerial Responder, 3 mana for a 2-3, with 3 we're great keywords, Flying, Vigilance, and Lifelink. Then we got Restoration Specialist. One and a white for a 2-1, and we can pay a white and sack it to return up to one target artifact card, probably a vehicle, and up to one target enchantment card from your graveyard to your hand. So that's going to come in very, very useful. Aviary Mechanic is two mana for a 2-2. When it enters the battlefield, return another permanent you control to its owner's hand. So we might want to bounce that recruiter back so we can start stacking the top of our deck yet again. We've got Fairgrounds Warden, which is basically O-Ring on a Dwarf body. And we've got Durgar Hedge Mage, which is two and a hybrid Boros for 2-2. Two, two. If we control two or more mountains when it comes into play, we can destroy target artifacts. On the flip side, if we control two or more planes, we can destroy target enchantment. Durgar Mine Captain starts us off with two untapped creatures. Now these are something that I've added into the deck that's a little bit different. So this is two and a Boros hybrid. We can pay one and a hybrid and untap this creature. And this gives attacking creatures plus one, plus naught until end of turn. So what we can do is crew something with this, 
then untap it and give that vehicle that's going to be attacking uh, the little power boost. Along the same vein, Order of White Clay, 3 mana for 1 4. And what we can do is pay 3, untap it, and return target creature card with CMC 3 or less from our graveyard directly back into play. So that is every creature in this deck because of Tiny Leader's restrictions. So that's come in very handy. Now we're straight into the vehicles, and in this format, you can still play Smuggler's Copter. Absolute bomb when I was playing this back in standard before it got taken away from me. Uh, surprise, surprise, I was playing Boris Vehicles. Uh, so two mana for a 3-3 flyer. When it attacks, you can draw a card if you do discard a card, and it's got a super low crew cost of one. Then we've got Heart of Kieran, two mana for Flying Vigilance. It's 4-4 with a crew of three. And then Aether Sphere Harvester, 3 mana for a 3-5 flying. You get 2 energy when it enters the battlefield, and you can pay 1 to give it lifelink until end of turn. So that runs out all of our flying vehicles. Next up, we want to Consulate Dreadnought, and this is a beast. 1 mana for a 7-11. The only downside is, though, that it's got a crew of 6, that's going to take a lot of dwarves to man that Dreadnought. However, if we've got a Peace Walker Colossus down, 3 mana for a 6-6, its ability says if we pay one and a white, another target vehicle we control becomes an artifact creature until end of turn. So that's one way of getting the Dreadnought into combat. The other way is coming up slightly later. Rolling on with the vehicles, we've got a Daredevil Dragster, 3 mana for 4-4. Four, four. This can basically be uh, attacking or blocking twice and then it gets sacrificed and we draw two cards. Renegade Freighter, 3 mana for a 4-3, however when it attacks it becomes 5-4 and gets Trample. And then Cultivator's Caravan is 3 mana for a 5-5 mana rock basically. Speaking of mana rocks, here's Boros Signet and following that up Boros Cluestone which does have some handy draw on it. So heading into the spells and it's that card that I was talking about earlier hinting to. Siege Modification, 1 red and a red for an aura, we can enchant a creature or a vehicle, ideally we want this on a vehicle, that turns the vehicle into a creature. It also gives it plus 3, plus naught and first strike, so get that on that dreadnought and you should be doing a nice bit of damage. Some other spells that really care about vehicles are built to last, so this is white mana for an instant, target creature gets plus 2 plus 2 until end of turn, if it's an artifact creature it's also indestructible. Then we've got built to smash which is red, target attacking creature gets plus 3 plus 3 until end of turn, if it's an artifact creature, such as a vehicle, it gains trample until end of turn. Now we're into some fairly standard Boros spells, so we have got lightning bolt. We've got Lightning Helix in here, and this gains us 3 life as well. Not an awful lot of life gain in here. We've got Path to Exile, and we've got Swords to Plowshares. Then we have got Caught in the Brights. So this is basically Oblivion Ring, but it has the added clause of when a vehicle you control attacks, exile an enchanted creature, so you can exile the creature that it's enchanting. Uh, you can only enchant a creature, um, you can't target sort of any non-land permanent like um, other enchantments of this type. Then we've got a board wipe in here, Martial Coup. So X white and a white for a sorcery. Put X 1-1 one, one white soldier creature tokens onto the battlefield. If X was 5 or more, destroy all other creatures. So basically we uh, don't crew our vehicles, so they're just artifacts, they're not creatures. We play this for 5 or more, we wipe the field, we get that many soldier token creatures and then we can use those guys to crew our vehicle straight away and swing in so that is a nifty bit of tech. So that's all the spells and then we're going to quickly bash through the mana base here so we're starting off with the sacred foundry we've got an Arid Mesa allowing us to tutor that out and then we've got a rugged prairie as well don't have to run these splashy uh, Zendikar versions I just really like the way they looked up on screen altogether. Then we've got Command Tower, yep you can play this in Tiny Leaders which is awesome. We've got Path of Ancestry, so every time we cast a Dwarf we get to scry one. 
Clifftop Retreat and also Inspiring Vantage are two of the dual lands that I'm running in here. And then we're on to a bit of spiciness new for this upgrade. So we've got Muta Vault and also Needle Spires. So man lands in vehicle decks are really cool. Basically you can activate them, turn them into creatures for the turn. They can crew that vehicle and then at the end of the turn they go back to being lands. So yeah, they kind of evade board wipes. We've also got Inventor's Fair in here. So it's legendary land. If you control three or more artifacts in your upkeep, you gain a life. 4 mana and tap it and sacrifice it and then we can tutor out an artifact card, reveal it, put it into our hand. Can only do that if we control 3 or more artifacts, shouldn't be a problem. Rounding out the mana base then, playing 3 planes and 2 mountains. So tiny leaders, we can play a sideboard and this sideboard is just filled with the really good stuff that I love about Boros. So we've got Aegis of the Gods, which is an enchantment creature, 2-1, and that gives us Hexproof. We've got Authority of the Consoles. This is an enchantment. Creatures our opponent's control enter the battlefield tapped, and when they do, we gain a life. Solemnity, another enchantment, and this basically stops all counters strategies. Damping Sphere from Dominaria, 2 mana for an artifact. If lands tapped for 2 or more mana, it only produces is waste mana and then possibly the quintessential boros uh, hate card blood moon so non-basic lands are mountains shouldn't really affect us too much have got those three planes in there crook of condemnation is here to exile cards from graveyards to shut down those strategies anger of the gods just in case we need another board wipe in there and boros charm so two mana we can either deal four damage to a player Permanence we control, gain indestructible, or target creature gets double strike until end of turn. Seal Away is new O-Ring-esque uh, tech from Dominaria. And then we've got Fragmentize. One mana basically for Disenchant because it only targets cards with a CMC 4 or less, which is everything in Tiny Leaders. And there you have it, my Depala Tiny Leaders deck tech. So you can find more Tiny Leaders content by clicking on the card in the top right corner and the deck list for these dwarves and vehicles is down in the description below. If you haven't already, remember to tap those like and subscribe buttons, share this video with your friends and check out some of my other videos and playlists. Thanks so much for watching, catch you all on the next one. Cheers!